Welcome back. In the previous section, Mohammed showed you how you can deal with simple regression and classification problems. But what if the problem becomes a bit more complex? In these cases, we need also more complex functions. And we can actually achieve those by composing some of the methods that we already know. That's what we will do in this section. Let's take another look at the problem from the previous section. Here we have those four clusters that we need to classify correctly. And what would a correct classification look like? Well, this would be one example where we have the upper left and lower right corner assigned class one and the upper right and lower left corner assigned class zero. This would be a correct classification and whatever happens in the middle it's not really defined by our training data, so we could have an arbitrary choice here. Either signing class 0 or class 1 is both fine, at least judging from our training data. Just using a linear classifier is not working well here. Half the points are actually not classified correctly. And if, even if we turn this classifier a bit, it's still not working correctly. Another choice, the same problem. There are not many better approaches here with just one linear classifier. So what do we do? Well, let's take a step back and simplify our problem. Instead of looking at these clusters of points, we just look at individual points that are located in the corners. So the upper corner here would be um, a value of one for x2 and a value of zero for x1. So this is now what we are dealing with as a representation for the clusters of points that we had before. So this is our simplified problem and with that we can take another look at what linear classifiers can do for us in this case. So this simple diagonal line which classifies everything above it as 1 and everything below the line as 0 is actually giving us not a bad prediction because we have the lower left corner correctly classified as 0 the upper left and lower right corner are also correctly classified as 1. Only this point in the upper right corner is still classified incorrectly. So it's not good, but somewhat in the right direction. Now let's look at another classifier, where we have now the line above the diagonal, and we also have the decision directions flipped. So everything below the line is classified as 1 and everything above the line is classified as 0. So this upper left corner is classified correctly now. Nice. The stars are still classified correctly as 1. That's also good. But now the lower left corner is wrongly classified as 1, even though it should be a 0. Hmm. Now we have two classifiers, both of which are not perfect. Let's take a look again. Maybe we can use those two classifiers together to form something that actually helps us. Let's take another look at what we want to achieve. We want to classify these corners correctly. Um, and how can we use those two classifiers, which, by the way, output either 1 or 0 for whatever point we go into them, and use those to generate exactly these decisions? Well, we could use another classifier. Well, this classifier would take the decisions of these two simple classifiers and combine them. And how does it combine them? Well, it just overlays those two classifiers and wherever, wherever both of them decide for one, it will output a one. And all the other cases where only one of them is class classifying it as one, then we would output a zero. So it's basically overlaying those two classifiers together and therefore only this diagonal, uh, this diagonal band will also give us class one. The upper corner and the lower corner will give us prediction of zero. And that's exactly what we need. So this will give us the correct classification for, the, for all the points that we have here. This is nice. Now we can also classify the clusters of these points correctly. And we find weights 
that basically describe these two classifiers exactly in the way we want them and another set of weights that combines the two classifiers together by basically combining the decisions. All right, now how do we actually find those weights? Now, what we just had was basically hand specified by me, but how do we find those values that work for a problem that we have? If we have combined those two layers of computation, basically, how can we deal with that? Well, we can no longer compute a closed form solution because we added a second layer. That is unfortunate. But Mohammed already told us that we can still deal with this if we can compute the gradient of the loss with respect to the parameters. And we can actually still do this to find a solution. And more on this, I will tell you in the next section when we talk about neural networks. Now let's summarize what we've learned here. We have some data sets that are not linearly separable. In these cases, we need some more complex functions, which are nothing else than just a combination of simple functions that give us not those linear decision boundaries, but multiple decision boundaries or more nonlinear decision boundaries to actually classify thus these complex problems correctly. And now the question is, what happens if we scale this up to the next level? If we add more layers, more units of computation, what happens then? Well, what happens is deep neural networks. And you will see more about this in the next section.